Swift likes to be predictable, which means it encourages us to write code that's both safe and will work the way we expect when played back on users' devices. Now, previously, you met throwing functions, which make us handle errors carefully, or at least think about them. But there's a second way Swift encourages predictable behavior in our code, and that's called optionals. A word meaning this thing might have a value, or it might not. Now, you can see optionals in action if you think about this code here. Let opposites be a dictionary with a key Mario, var uh, value Wario, key Luigi, value Waluigi. What do we get if we read peach opposite as opposites peach? So we've got a string string dictionary with two keys, Mario and Luigi. We then attempt to read the value attached to the key peach, which does not exist and we have not provided a fault value for the dictionary. So what will peach opposite be after this code runs? Now this is a string string dictionary, which means the keys are string and the values are strings. However, we've tried to read a key that doesn't exist. It wouldn't make sense to get a string back. There is no value there, there is nothing there. And Swift solutions for this is called optionals which means data that might be present, but might not be present. And they are primarily represented by putting a question mark after a type. So in this case, peach opposite will be a string question mark. String? Might be a string, might not be. Now optionals effectively work like a box. And there might be something inside the box. We can open the box, have a look inside and find, aha, there's a string in there waiting for us. Or we open the box and find there's nothing at all in there. A special value Swift calls nil. That means nothing, no value. Any kind of data can be optional. Strings, ints, bools, doubles, enums, structs, classes, arrays, it's all potentially optional. So you're probably thinking, well, we had a string before, and now we've got an optional string, a string question mark. How does it actually change the code we write? Well, here's a clincher. Swift likes our code to be predictable, which means it won't let us use data that might not be there. In the case of optionals, it means we have to unwrap the optional in order to use it. That means we've got to look inside the box, see if there's a value, if there is, take it out and use it. We unwrap the optional, take the value out of the box. Now Swift gives us two primary ways of unwrapping optionals, but the one you'll see the most looks like this. If let Mario opposite equals opposites Mario. This if let syntax is very common in Swift and it combines a condition, the if part, with creating a constant, the let part. And together, it does three things. First, it's gonna read the optional value from the dictionary. Give me the value attached to the key Mario. That'll be an optional string. The key Mario might be there, might not be there. So the value might be there or might not be there. If the optional has a value inside, it will be unwrapped. That means the string inside the optional is taken out and placed into Mario opposite. That's now set to a real string. And then Swift considers our, our condition here, the if, to have succeeded. We were able to unwrap the optional. And so the condition's body is run. Mario's opposite is Mario opposite. And that's a real string, not an optional string. We removed the optionality. We, we reached in, found a value inside, took it out, a real string, and put it into Mario opposite as a constant. And the condition's body will only be run if the optional had a value inside. If you want to have an else block, if there's no value inside, go for it. This kind of code is perfectly fine. You know, var username, optional string is nil, has no value right now. Run a bunch of code, maybe it still has no value. You can then say, 
if let unwrapped name equals username, print we got a user unwrapped name. Else, the optional was empty. So think of optionals as being a bit like uh, Schrodinger's data type. There might be a value inside the box, or there might not be. But the only way to find out is to check. Open the box, have a look inside. Now this might seem rather academic so far, but optionals are critical as a tool for helping us write better software. You see, in the same way optionals mean data might be there, might not be there, also means that all the non-optionals, regular strings, integers, boolean, and so forth, mean data must be there. Must be. It has to have a value. If you think about it, if we had a non-optional integer, it might be a million. It might be zero. But it's still a number either way. A million, zero, minus a million, a billion, da da da. They're all numbers. You can still work with them with mathematics. They're all guaranteed to be present. They are non-optional. They are not optionals. In comparison, an optional integer might be there, a million, might not be there, have no value at all. It's not zero or any other possible number. It's simply nothing. Similarly, if you have an optional, uh, non-optional string, it might be hello or even an empty string. But both hello and an empty string are different from an optional string set to nil. You know, the optional string of nil, there's nothing there at all. An empty string, there's a string, but it has no characters right now. Different things. And you can think, go any further, you could say, you know, literally every type can be optional. So we could say uh, an array, give me an array of integers. Well, an array of one integer would be an array of, of zero. An empty array of integers would be, you know, box of int being made. It exists, but it's empty. But it's also an optional array of integers, which has no value. The thing isn't just empty. It, the array doesn't even exist. There is no array to add to. It's not even there. So to be clear, and this really does matter, an optional integer set to nil is not the same as a non-optional integer set to zero. Num2 and num3 are different. In the same way, uh, str2 and str3 are different. An empty string and a nil string are different things. An empty integer array and a nil integer array are different things. We're talking about the absence of everything. There's nothing in there at all. This is important. Optionals, but also non-optionals. Uh, there's a, a chap on Twitter, Zev Eisenberg, who said this, Swift didn't introduce optionals, it introduced non-optionals. It's really powerful stuff, because you know if this thing here is optional, maybe it has a value, maybe not. If it's non-optional, it definitely has a safe value you can work with. It could be zero, it could be an empty string, but it's definitely there. Now you can see the safety of this in action if we jump over to Xcode. We could say something like, uh, I want to square a number int returning a new int. And we'll just do number times number like this. And now if I have an optional integer, var number optional int equals nil. Maybe I'm asking the user to enter a number and they haven't entered one yet, right? There's no value yet. They haven't chosen zero. There's nothing yet. We can now do print square number, that number, square, sorry, parens number number, like that. Call our square function, pass in that number for a number parameter. And this isn't going to work. This thing might have a value, might not have a value. It's an optional integer. Square expects a real integer, a definite non-optional integer. We cannot use an optional where a non-optional is needed. So if there was no value, we could multiply it. It wouldn't work. And so to call this function with number, we've got to unwrap the optional. Reach inside the optional, check that there's a value. If there is, pull it out, 
and do something with it. Unwrapping. We can say if let unwrapped number equals number, then square unwrapped number. And that will be a real integer. That code is fine. It won't run here because the integer is nil. This test will fail. But you can have an else block doing something else with it if you wanted to. Now, before we're done, I want to mention one last thing. Uh, when unwrapping optionals, it's very common to unwrap them into a constant with the same name as the optional. This is perfectly allowable in Swift and means you haven't got to keep on naming things unwrap number, or unwrap name, or whatever. And it's a bit hard to read at first, right? I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like this. If let number equals number there. And then we can just do number in here. And this style, even though it's extremely common to the point where it's almost the standard, this style is a bit confusing when you first see it because it now feels like there's quantum physics happening in your code. Can number be optional and non-optional at the same time? No is the answer. No, it can't be. What's happening here is that we are temporarily creating a second constant with the same name, right? Number is a new constant being made with the same name, and it's only available inside the uh, conditions braces. That's its scope, its context where it's made. Number only works inside here. And so inside those braces, from this bit down to here, we're working with the unwrapped constant number. Before or after, we are working with the original optional number. This is a technique called shadowing, and it's mainly used with optional unwraps like this one here. If let x equals x, or y equals y, or whatever you want to. It's very, very common in Swift. And if you think about it, remember this, uh, inside the condition's body, we have the unwrapped value to work with. For as many lines of code as we have here, number is completely valid all the way in all these lines of code here. But then as soon as that finishes, we're back to the old one, back to the optional number.